Hello people of YouTube, welcome to the next one of my teardown videos which is of the magnetron from a microwave oven. Now these, before I start, I will warn you, this bit here and a similar insulator at the back are made of beryllium oxide or a beryllium containing ceramic and are extremely dangerous. Should not be ground, crushed, chipped or damaged. If you're not sure what you're doing with it, don't. The reason I'm tearing this down, we'll start by removing the two obvious visible screws. Uh, the reason I'm tearing this down is because I believe this is the reason the microwave that I tore down failed. Um, the tear down video itself, ironically, also failed. That's all right, I have more microwaves, no problem. But yes, this. I believe was the cause of failure of a microwave. Now this, in case you're not aware what a magnetron is, it is a resonant vacuum tube that produces microwave energy from DC. That is just the steel front plate, obviously. Uh, here we have a copper mesh washer. Very interesting device, uh, might be useful possibly for cleaning soldering iron tips. We'll certainly hang on to it. It's a very finely woven copper mesh. It's rather unusual. Quite an interesting item in itself. And the first of... Oh, no, here we go. Hold on. It's being difficult. It will not come apart. What a surprise! Uh, I believe it's possibly riveted. Uh, no, this will not come out for some reason. Um, not quite sure why. It should do. But uh, we'll get that off later anyway. The valve itself wishes to come out of here, apparently. Now, this... Right, these are series inductors feeding the filament current to the magnetron. Now the reason I believe, I'm guessing here, but it's probably quite an educated guess if I do say so myself, is to prevent any high frequencies leaking back down the transformer winding wires. Uh, they are, I don't know whether they're copper or what. What these cores are made of, actually. Uh, yeah, it could be copper. Yes, I think that's copper wire, and there's a little ferrite bead in there. If you note, there's a little ferrite in one of those. Now, if I grab one end and pull the other, there we go. There's the ferrite bead. Um, that's just a glue, I'd imagine. So that's copper wires, glue and some ferrite. Um, this is the end of the valve. There we go. This is one of the big magnets, which are quite handy magnets to have. That's steel, and that's just again steel. This here is a riveted connector assembly. It's completely sealed. It's riveted to the magnetron case. I don't know whether I can break the rivets or not, to be honest. There we go. Yes, I can quite easily break the rivets, apparently. It's obviously not designed to handle any mechanical stress. It would never have had any mechanical stress in its working life. There we go. It's simply a feed-through insulator. Um, being that it holds the anode, what it has to do is carry the low voltage AC across here, but that low voltage AC is elevated at several thousand volts DC above this chassis, so hence the large insulator there. It's basically the equivalent of a transformer bushing. It does the same job. Right, now this is where the 
magnetron gets potentially dangerous. I don't think I can tear it down much further than this without exposing beryllium. Uh, this should have come off, this tip here. Very handy devices for holding all your tools, these magnets. I will grab quickly a knife. These are not the actual kitchen knives, by the way. It's a set of kitchen knives that I picked up for the purposes of disassembly of things. There we go. It's just a piece of steel again. There's the second of the magnets. Um, they're not neodymium magnets or rare earth magnets at all. But they are quite powerful, as you can see. Uh, ooh, there we go. They're fairly powerful as non-rare earth magnets go. I can quite happily move that through a two inch thick oak table. Actually, no, I don't think it's oak. I think it's pine, but it's two inches thick. And that's actually powerful enough to hold the underneath magnet on. Yeah, enough playing with magnets now. I don't know. Ooh, dear, that shattered. Oh, well, we now have lots more magnets. Word of warning with those, they're very fragile. <laughs> they're also two a penny because there are many, many dud microwaves around. Now, these are aluminium or aluminium if you're American. Uh, they're purely cooling vanes. These should be able to peel off of the magnetron without any damage. I don't... I'm not entirely certain whether they will. We will find out. Basically, the low voltage goes in here for the filament across these two. The high voltage is applied between those two filament terminals and this, which is frame ground, which is actually earth ground as well to the microwave. And the high energy microwaves come out of here. They don't come out of the hole. A lot of people think they come out of the hole in the end here. That's purely the ceiling pip where the vacuum is sealed off. Because it does work like a thermionic valve. It's not as simple as it looks outside. Um, I will link to the Wikipedia article on magnetrons in the description for the video. Um, or maybe even put a link on the video itself, if I can figure out how to do that. Because it, the method of operation is actually quite fascinating. It's quite amazing that they've become such a cheap commodity household item that I can get hold of several of them to disassemble. There we go. One off. And as you can see, this is copper, I believe. It looks like copper. I've dented it slightly there. It's under high vacuum. It's a cavity magnetron, which basically means um, that it relies on the gaps between electrodes inside. There's a very complex electrode structure inside of these. And as I said, I'm not going to take it much further apart than this because of the danger of the beryllium. It's very nasty substance, quite honestly. It's not something you want getting all over you. And it's quite... It's this pink and this white. Possibly just the pink. I'm not sure whether this is beryllium or not. I'm not going to mess with it just in case. I'd rather not take the risk. It's a toxic heavy metal. Um, the dust, if it gets into your lungs, will sit there and do God knows what in the future. Um, I'd rather have a future not full of God knows what. If you'll allow me that privilege. But yes, it's fairly simple to remove the aluminium here. It's not worth doing for financial reasons, but... It is worth doing for pure interest reasons. Um, I have never seen a magnetron torn down on YouTube except for once by an Indian gentleman who probably 
did quite well, but unfortunately the camera wasn't focused very well on what he was doing, and it was at great distance. Right, this is the aluminium scrap, and this is the actual cavity. Inside there is all the works, which I am not going to expose, but I will, as I said, link to the YouTube video. Uh, not the YouTube video, sorry. I will link to the Wikipedia page showing the workings of these things. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments.